What's going on guys, Kazi here and welcome to another Photoshop video. This time we're going down to South America and I think this one's going to have to be a two-parter because there are so many cool animals that live in that part of the world. I'm thinking that we're going to have to do some two-parters for some other regions of the planet as well. But I thought we'd dive right into it and uh, this time I thought we'd do kind of the cuter animals of South America, some of the more iconic animals. So I'm thinking we got the capybara, we've got the macaw parrot, we've got the sloth, a little baby tapir, and a little anteater. I'm not sure how we're going to use the anteater, but we're just going to dive right into it and see what we can come up with. I hope you guys enjoy this video and of course if you do hit that like button and if you want to see part two to this video make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get a notification. So we're going to dive right into the capybara to start. They're kind of nature's little derpy little animals. I love these guys. They're so friendly. Every time you see them in videos and stuff like that they have all these other animals just kind of snuggling and cuddling with them. But I thought they'd be a pretty good base, especially since we were using kind of the cute animals. So my thinking here was that for the part one of this video, we would do kind of uh, the more cute herbivores, plant eating kind of creatures. Uh, they kind of chill out in the rainforest. And part two, I'm thinking will be some of the more dangerous creatures like jaguars and uh, crocodiles or I don't actually know what type of crocodile or alligator live in South America but we'll figure it out when it comes to that video but for now it looks like we're just cleaning up this capybara's little feet they're basically giant rats they're they're the world's largest uh, rodent so they're you know related to rabbits and all other uh, kind of nibbly little creatures of course we've got the anteater as well I wanted to use the iconic anteater um, mouth face, but I saw their giant bushy tail and I thought, you know what, I can see that going really well with the sloth later on. So I thought that we just try to find a way to get that tail kind of chipped on there. I had a little trouble with it. It's kind of weird, but when you're in the early phases of creating something in Photoshop, you're just kind of messing around, seeing what you think is going to work best. But I think this tail turned out pretty good. Um, I'm going to do some blending, all that. We've learned a lot, actually, in the past couple of videos that we've done. I did struggle a little bit, but I think we cleaned it up towards the end. Uh, as you can see here, this is what I mean by cleaned it up a little bit. It was kind of a little lumpy at first, but um, we definitely got it going in the right way. Anteaters are pretty cool animals, actually, because there's been some cool videos circulating about them, how apparently they fight jaguars they just t-pose hard they just stick their arms to the left and right and uh, nothing wants to go near them apparently they're strong enough to in the right circumstances like one shot a jaguar like just fight one off i don't know how it happens um but i, I definitely want to see i've seen some like weird video of it where you can't really see what's going on um but you don't want to mess with an anteater that's for sure all right so this tail is looking pretty good um it's not perfect but I'm happy with how it looks. It adds a lot, a lot of size to this capybara, which is already a pretty large animal. Um, like I said, we're just kind of experimenting here with this tail. I think it turns out pretty good though. It's a little rough, but of course I wanted to give it that fluffy natural feel, some cloud look, you know, how you might draw, or how you might draw a cloud when you're a little kid. So we'll move on to the sloth here. And of course, we're gonna use the sloth face. I mean, how can you not? Look at those cute little derpy eyes. I mean, sloths are like little jungle hobos, basically. <laughs> I mean, they're so cute. They almost have this weird little raccoon face to them, um, but they're so innocent and soft that, oh my God, as soon as you put it on this capybara, you see what's going on here. This creature, <laughs> it's unbelievably cute already. Oh, this is so funny. Uh, I'm hoping that there's a nice contrast between this video and the next video because uh, this thing is super cute already. That means that the next Photoshop creature of Brazil or South America just has to be horrifying. It has to be nightmare fuel because so far this is really cute. And this is something I'm really uh, happy with in this video here is that I kind of got pretty good at the blending here and I started trying to add this look that made uh, the lines less sharp and more fuzzy. So I was trying to kind of add this element where the the sloth, you could see its hair. Because I find hair to be challenging in Photoshop. I don't really know how to do anything with it. You could see with the anteater tail, I just cut it out. Um, but I thought I'd kind of mix it up with the, 
the face of the sloth and try to make them fuzzy, you know? And I think it turned out pretty good. It blends pretty nice. The, the head doesn't look too out of place. And uh, all the pieces are coming together. It's so damn cute already. Wow, I love it. I don't even know what we're going to call this thing as usual with all our Photoshop videos, but it is definitely like some kind of like cute little sprite. Some cute little creature. Ah, I'm having a big stretch here. Ah, and here's the cutest creature of them all right here. Now, this is a baby tapir. Tapirs are kind of weird animals, and I didn't know how I was going to use it, but I love the pattern that uh, the baby tapirs have. It's kind of like a baby deer. They have this weird kind of camouflage pattern, and I didn't think I would use its body, but I thought maybe I can get its pattern to kind of blend into the fur of the capybara, or capybara, maybe I've been saying it wrong. I'm pretty sure it's capybara. But um, I really like the way that looked, and it kind of adds an element that I think I'm gonna start trying to add in future videos as I get a little better at Photoshop, is that you can kind of start adding design elements onto a creature that, you know, are a lot more than just adding a part. I think I can start adding textures and other things to some of these creatures moving forward because even though this didn't turn out perfect, um, I really did like the look of it. Um, I like the striped kind of camouflage look and I was able to add an element of another animal that I don't think I would have been able to add otherwise because I thought about adding the, the nose of the tape here because they have these long weird noses, but it would look weird on the sloth. So as you can see, the macaw. I like using birds in these creatures, um, and I thought that the macaw is a very um, kind of mystical looking bird anyway, so I thought that we could use its wings. We had a request in one of the last videos to try and do some fairy wings, and I thought that the macaw had kind of a mystical, magical wing style. I was considering using butterfly wings for the fairy wings. Um, but I think I'm going to save that for a future video because um, I would like to make some kind of like, I don't know, some creatures based on fantasy creatures maybe one day. And that could be a cool uh, segment. So maybe I'll save butterfly wings for uh, a full on fairy Photoshop challenge if uh, that's what you guys are looking for. So these wings, this time instead of mirroring the same wing, I thought I would add... Um, a secondary wing that was a little bit different and I was kind of experimenting with placement because so far all my wings kind of look the same and uh, I want to mix it up because a lot of these videos I'm just trying to challenge myself right so um, I do a little bit more with these wings than I usually do I've tried blending them in a little bit I'm experimenting with size and you'll even see that those pink patches, uh, I kind of deal with those a little bit. That's the skin of the parrot underneath the feathers. And um, yeah, after I rejig these wigs, wings, the way they're set up, uh, I really like the way they turned out. So this is where I add the kind of fairy element. Um, fairies often have that weird kind of butterfly style wing with the, the one big wing on top and the smaller wing on the bottom. And I thought, so far this little sloth creature is kind of like the the sprite of the forest i'm noticing so i thought i'd put these cute little wings on it i had a background already chosen because uh, i had it in mind that i wanted to kind of fit a scene and um it gave me a lot more time to focus on the creature as well as how i thought the creature would fit into the space so we've already got a background it looks great i mean we're in this kind of mystical forest and this is only just adding to the the fairy elements uh, back again we're adding some fuzz I really like the way that that style looks it looks really cool it doesn't look that great when you're zoomed in it looks a little fuzzy but when it zooms back out it definitely gives it a much more uh, organic look to it like look that looks so much better do a little bit on the capybara he's got a fuzzy butt little fuzzy chest this is great this is so cute this is definitely the cutest Photoshop creation that we've made. A lot of them are kind of nightmare fuel. And uh, <laughs> I really like the way this is looking. The sloth has some really cute looks to him. He's uh, just looking all cute and dainty. And this is what I mean. I filled in some of these pink spaces, challenging myself a little bit to make the wing look more attached. And I'm really happy with this, the way this looked. Now, this is something that I'm kind of picking up from the uh, American Beast. I had shadows that I was using cast from a um, bonfire, and I wanted it to make it look like the capybara was sitting in the water. 
because in the wild, capybaras hang out by the water. So I thought, why not, if this creature is part capybara, why wouldn't it be hanging out by the water? So I was thinking tropical butterflies. We're trying to build this kind of as this fairy, kind of mystical setting, I'm thinking. And I think that the perfect way to go for it is these blue morphos. So morphos, I guess, are a pretty common type of butterfly, but they're really common in South America, especially these blue ones. I wanted to add some more elements of them, but they're kind of tricky and uh, they're really pretty butterflies and I didn't want to completely just butcher and destroy them. I didn't know what I was going to do, so I'm kind of experimenting, figuring out the best butterfly to use. It, it's kind of hard when you're using background elements because you're not looking for stuff for parts. You want something that looks good on a whole. We're shrinking it down so I didn't care about its antennas too much. So we drop these guys down. Now these butterflies are pretty cool because even though the blue that you see is kind of what is unique to them, they also have a really cool um, underwing that looks like an owl, I believe. I believe these are the butterflies that uh, when they close up their wings, they kind of look like there's an eyeball looking at you. But to kind of increase the cuteness, <laughs> we threw it on there like a little bow. And I thought, you know what, like in all our videos, we need an animal companion. So we'll uh, pop up this cute little tree frog. And then uh, he can hang out with our little beast. So I think the seed is already coming together. It's got a very mystical forest theme to it. This really looks like some kind of Disney creature. Like if I was... Or, or an anime creature, you know how in anime they always have some cute little creature like Pikachu style Pokemon monster kind of hanging out with the main characters. This little sloth creature is definitely uh, would fit into that fantasy role. I still don't know what we would call it. It's kind of like the sprite of the rainforest. I don't know. It's like a pixie or something. But I would definitely imagine it's got a pretty chill lifestyle. You know, it's got its big chunky capybara body. It's a little camouflage so it can hide. Oh, those birds look great over the waterfall. I thought I'd do a really simple kind of background this time. A lot of the other ones were really busy, but I was really happy with how this sloth looked. So I thought, you know what, let's just keep the sloth as being the the star. I was thinking Goliath bird eaters because they're really cool spiders from South America. They're like giant tarantulas that eat birds and all this other cool stuff, but I couldn't find a place that um, really fit it. So I thought the last element that I would add here is a little bit of a, a fairy glow. Um, I wasn't sure how I was going to add this or what I was going to do to make it look cool, but I kind of found this glowing effect that worked pretty good for me. And uh, I was able to just kind of fade it into the background and it adds this kind of like mystical element to it, which I think really brings out uh, the fantasy kind of style that's coming with this sloth. Honestly, I, I really like the way this turned out. Um, this one was just kind of out of the blue. I was trying something new. All right, we'll just do herbivores. We'll see how it uh, comes along. But this really turned out to be, I think this is one of my favorite Photoshop videos so far. I mean, I love the way that the sloth looks. I love the wings. The colors are so vibrant, even though it's like a really muted and brown kind of creation. And it kind of has that kind of carnival look to it that uh, Rio and Brazil is so popular for combined with some of those earthy colors that really just make you realize you're in a, a rainforest. This turned out really nice. I hope you guys are really enjoying this because honestly, I'm sitting here in awe. I'm <laughs> just impressed with myself, to be honest with you. We're fiddling with the wings a little bit, but otherwise, this was probably one of the fastest Photoshop videos that we've done so far. Not that we're going for speed, but this thing just turned out really great. Like, look at that. You've got the sloth just floating, doing his own thing. God, I couldn't be happier with how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this Photoshop. If there's any elements you think I missed or any suggestions for animals to add in the part two of this video, I know we're doing jaguars. We're going for something that's bitey, stabby, clawy, jumpy, murderous. So that'll definitely be part two, but Damn, this thing turned out great. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments uh, below. If there's any place that you'd like me to draw an animal for next, of course, that is always accepted in the comments too. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more, and if you're looking forward to part two of this video, uh, definitely hit that subscribe button because that video will be coming out for you guys soon. So uh, as always, I'm Kazi. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you guys have a fantastic Have a good one. Peace out.